Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number five of Mind Your Own Retirement from Your Life Choices Simplifying Retirement. We have the publisher of Your Life Choices, Kay Fulick, with us. Hello, Kay. Hello, Dixie. How are you going? I'm going extremely well. That's terrific. We've uh, up to episode number five. Can you believe it? I can't believe it, but I has ha- has a reaction been from uh, from your side? Um, our members love it. We got another email yesterday. Oh, from that lady, the flight attendant. The former- Correct. Oh, wasn't that lovely? Correct, uh, Trisha, and she's been flying, was flying as uh, with one of the major airlines for thirty years. And you and I have agreed. Let's get her on board. Oh, absolutely. Find yeah. out about her time with Smithy and uh, you know all that. It would just be <laughs> wonderful. No, she, she sounded a lovely lady. Exactly. Lovely lady. And um, loving the podcast. So thank you so much indeed. And to all the other folks who've fed back to Your Life Choices to say that Mind Your Own Retirement is, is helping them. Well, it seems that we're hitting the spot in terms of the format, John, but also we're getting in a lot of questions and suggestions. So that gives us a good heads up what people are wanting us to talk about. That's what it's all about on uh, Mind Your Own Retirement. And uh, let's kick off with money, money, money. Must be funny in a rich man's world. (laughs) I'll keep singing. If you you let me go, I'll keep doing ABBA songs. If you think I'm singing back, you're wrong. (laughs) Because I'm going to be serious. So um, what's the topic this week? Just, Just to go one step back, there's a hint uh, we're going to talk a lot about the luck of the Irish and the Irish. Ta-da, 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 ta-da. Ta-da. But first, let's do the money thing and let's get the serious part out the way, but not before we help people understand what the heck is happening with deeming rates and why should our members care and was the change enough? The government was listening to Kay Fallick, was listening to your life choices. I think so. And uh, they have uh, come to the party. I think so. Have they come all the way to the party or did they just uh, turn up? They almost came in the front door, but not quite. Not quite. So um, specifics, the change for singles who have less than $51,800 invested was from 1.75% to 1%. So at 1% their money is deemed. And for couples it was 86200 For people with more money invested, the change is from 3.25% to 3%. Now, I want you to hold that thought, John, because Uh what we're hearing from the Reserve Bank itself is that they will most likely be cutting the interest rate by 0.25 again in the next few weeks slash months. Mm. So the amount that has been reduced will possibly be, be lost swole, in time. Swallowed up. <laughs> so the government giveth with one hand, take away us with the other. Uh, yep. And comment on our website yesterday because naturally we covered all the detail and deeming rates are hard to understand at the best of times. So I would urge people to go to our website, yourlifechoices.com.au, to get the detail. But one of the comments came in, once again, age pensioners who have no home or assets are left way behind. The basic pension must be increased immediately or I can see many ending their lives early because they can't afford to live. I'm a housing tenant and I'm actually worse off with the last increase by 60 cents a fortnight. Mm, dearie me. That's, that's real that life. going backwards, isn't it? That's real life when you're renting on an age pension. Mm. And the sad thing is, I think, and we wrote about this yesterday, we believe the base rate of the age pension must be increased. Deeming rates should certainly be decreased, but... We, we want to look after every age pensioner and particularly those who are living in constrained circumstances. So they're renting or they're still trying to pay off a mortgage. Mm. That base rate actually hasn't gone up since 2008. Mm. It's not good. 
So where, where do you see uh, your life choices uh, assisting in um, talking to government? Or Well, what we do is we write about it a lot, but what we are starting to do more of is send what we write with our member comments. So uh-huh. yesterday's article got 100 plus comments. Mm-hmm. So to parcel that up and send it to the relevant minister and opposition minister so that people who are making decisions... I was quite shocked that the minister who made the decision on deeming rates said, oh, well, it will be good. We all like a little more money in our pockets. And we know that parliamentarians are getting about $8,000 and pensioners at best are getting 800 And it sounded like quite a a glib comment, Mm. to be honest. Well, of course we all like extra money in our pockets, but some need it more than others. So if you'd like to know more, go to yourlifechoices.com.au and uh, have a look there and you'll see some of the the comments, not only that, but also the articles uh, by Kay and her team um, about that very article, about that very uh, issue with with deeming rates, etc. Yeah, it's a it's a tricky one, all right. Anything else on money we can talk about today? Oh, we can talk till the cows come home. Mm. But I think we should be talking about family history. Ah, uh, excellent idea. And we are going to be going to Ireland a bit later on with the uh, who who's the you got the big boss from Ireland? The vice consul. Oh la la! How'd you pull that? Oh, we have influence. Clearly, we have friends. <laughs> and we're going to we're going to the Guinness factory, or you say we can? Uh, can we metaphorically, go, can, we, can we? All right. <laughs> we're going to find out about family. We're going to find out about uh, Ireland. And coming up shortly, we're going to find out about lifestyle and health with Steve Perkins. Yes, he's famous. Are you worried about spiralling out of pocket health costs? Private health funds have again increased their premiums, leaving more of you struggling to make ends meet. And in a double hit, a reduction in the government rebate means you're even more out of pocket. Find out how you could knock hundreds off the cost of your health insurance and receive a $100 gift card when you switch policies by visiting healthinsurancecomparison.com.au forward slash YLC. Welcome back to Mind Your Own Retirement from Your Life Choices, simplifying retirement. If you'd like to know anything about uh, issues that may affect your retirement, then go to yourlifechoices.com.au. Joined by Kay Fallick, the uh, producer, publisher, and uh, head honcho, chief bottle washer. She's the mother superior. She looks after everyone. She She's a family counsellor. She <laughs> looks after the dog. Just nothing else. She, and... I bake cakes. She... <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking. I don't. I am looking. Did I see I anything don't. come in? I do not. No, but no. she also is very, very well connected to uh, well, Melbourne royalty, including Steve Perkin, who's on the line, journalist of the age in the Herald Sun, executive producer of the Footy Show back in the day, restaurateur for a long year, but a year is like about six years when you're a restaurateur, father of four. Um, oh, grandfather of three and a half, keen golfer, about to join Men's Shed. My goodness gracious me. Is there anything you haven't done, Steve Perkin? Hello. Hello. No, I haven't walked the dogs this morning, Kate. Can you come around and do that? <laughs> Steve, great to have you on uh, Mind Your Own Retirement. It is a great pleasure, um, certainly for me personally, to be able to speak to you because um, being of a certain age, uh, I have followed your fabulous career across the time. So it's great to have you on Mind Your Retirement. And uh, you've come to, to join Kay with uh, some words of wisdom, sir. Yeah, look, I, uh, I don't know if they're words of wisdom. I, um, I was talking to Kay recently about what I'm doing with my life at the moment and um, I mentioned that I'm trying to write a few biographies and she sort of had the idea that come on to a podcast and have a chat about, uh, about how that works and the benefits of it for people. So, Steve, I think the big deal is we all get to a certain age and I certainly got to a point where I had to get my dad's story written because I knew he wasn't going to be around forever. So that was my motivation. Um, there's there's a lot of different motivations. Do you, because you are an expert in this area, would you like to share the, the ways people come to writing family history? You're lucky that you had the energy to do it. If you rely on older people to sit down and either write or 
talk into a tape recorder about their life story, they won't do it because it does require a certain energy and a certain discipline. And most people then die and they take those stories with them. I was doing work years ago with Peter Thompson's The Golfer, his design company, and I would see Peter every day sitting in the office on his laptop doing things. And I, I said to him one day, you've never written a book. And he said, I'm going to, I'm going to. And I looked at him and he was 75 and I thought to myself, he's never going to do this. So I sat down with him and rather than me write a book about him, um, because I felt, well, who am I to do that? Um, Why don't you talk and I'll just transcribe? So that's what we did. And so the book, while it's a a sense of biography, I guess it's it's just him talking about things that I threw at him. And... um, uh, so we put together a book which um, was, I, I think was really fortunate that uh, because it, it put down on record his thoughts about his life and about golf and about things that he'd uh, experienced over a long time and which would have otherwise have been lost had I not done that. There might be a confidence thing. I know when I spoke to my dad, he felt he wasn't quite important enough to have a um, piece of writing put together about his life. I thought his life was fascinating, but he thought he was just a, a, a little cog. Um, is, is that part of it? Yeah, look, the, the, the simple reality is that everybody's got a story. Um, now, that story may only be of value to the kids, to the grandkids, it may be that that story has got a, bro- a wider market. Um, Peter Thompson obviously does have a wider market, but I could do a biography of the bloke next door who, to my knowledge, has done nothing significant with his life, but he will have things that he will tell you that you put in the book that his kids won't know. And it's stories that should be recorded because uh, it's, it's lost to the family history if it isn't. Steve, I know that there is so much play now for people going on to the family tree sites to find out, you know, their roots and where they've all come from. And it's a bit like taking photos on your uh, on your phone. That's great. You've got all these photos. What are you going to do with it? And uh, I guess once you've got all that information and you can go to the oldest surviving member, matriarch or patriarch of the family, and, and get it all put into a, a book a bio, like you're saying, so people can, in generations, look at it. But the family tree is is a great, but you really need to have the whole thing put down, don't you? Uh, well, I think you do. I thought I knew my dad. My, my, my dad died um, when he was only 45, so I was only 21 oh, or 22. Wow. So I, there were a lot of things that I didn't talk about with my dad. Um, but I thought I knew him pretty well. Um, ben Hills, the uh, former journalist, then went some years ago wrote a wrote a biography of my dad and and on reading that I discovered so many things about him that I didn't know now these things might be deemed as insignificant but you look at them and you can relate them back to your own kids in a sense and I look at the things that my dad did and I thought hey that sounds like you know, I've got a kid who, who does that who did that and and so it touches a base with you and um I was just really glad that Ben Hills did it because uh, I mean, Dad, he did it 30 years or so after Dad had died, um, but he st- we still had enough material to pull it together, and I learned things, and um, that sort of really sparked an interest in me to, to try and do a couple more of these. And I've, I, I went to a, a couple of guys I, I drank beer with on Friday nights, and they've got an interesting dad who I've met once or twice, and I said, why don't I do a book about your dad? They agreed to do it, to give it to him as a you know, a Christmas present, and I've spent several hours talking to Len and I've put together a book and I've written it. It's currently with the printer and they're going to give it to Len in time for this Christmas. So it's a really nice Christmas present and we've we've gone and got photos off his, you know, through his photo albums and put 40 or 50 photos in the book. And, you know, Len's in his, I think, early early 90s, late 80s, um, and he's got a book now that he can just give to his grandkids and... And and the story lives on. And that's the thing I found with what I I wrote about my dad. There's actually no greater gift. Mm. And as our parents get older, they want for nothing. They say, don't give me anything. I don't need things. But you come up with a book, including photos, that 
honours them and, and honours their achievements and the little things that they've passed on, there actually is no greater gift. So, Steve, are you telling us you're a gun for hire in this space? <laughs> um, well, yeah, look, uh, yeah, uh, that's exactly... Uh, it, it's a business I'm, I'm, I'm sort of setting myself up to do. There, there, there are people around who do this sort of thing. I recently edited a, a book for a woman who... Um, has done a biography on a, on a chap out at uh, Metropolitan Golf Club. He's been a pro out there for 50, 60 years. And I edited her book, and she's done four or five of these. I've done, I've now done six, uh, I think, and all in different formats and, and different styles. And a couple of them are, are for people who they're going to give the book to business clients so that business clients mm. get a sense of what that business is about. Um, yeah, which they... is just as interesting, isn't it? If you talk to someone like the Haig family yeah. about the Chocolates and the, all, yeah. the chocolate journey. So do you have a business name? My business name's called The Freelance Warehouse. I haven't yet dis- developed a uh, website for that, so I'm just operating off my uh, an email address if somebody wants to send me an email. Um, What's that, Steve? Uh, steve.perkin at hotmail.com. Steve.perkin at hotmail.com. Yeah. And, f- and failing that, Steve, people can come through your life choices okay. because I believe the editor is very good at taking care of leads <laughs> like this. And uh, uh, last question. Yeah. Has Steve Perkin uh, written a book about him? About me? Yeah. Yeah, you, pal. Everybody's got a story. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Boy, have you got a couple of stories. Have you got names? Because I want to hear names. I want to hear names. I want you to yeah. come out with names. And... I've, got some, I've got some rippers there going back yeah, to Yeah, so the is, the, is the book out? I'll buy it. I can take uh, it now. Uh, no, no. No, you're too kind, John. Well, you, you might be a candidate too. Okay, you, hey, you hey, 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 hey. Stop up. deflecting, pal. <laughs> no, Stop deflecting. No, Have no. you written a book? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Are and you writing a book? No, I'm not. Um, I, look, I, it's not to say I, I won't. Um, yeah. but I'll try and find someone who'll do it for you, mate. I, I, I came through the drug addle. <laughs> Steve.perkin. <laughs> Steve.perkin at hotmail.com, yeah. Oh, look, Steve, I, I, you know, you're... You're a genius, and you've just been part of our lives through the age, uh, through the footy show, to, through I the know. Herald and Weekly Times, and all the rest of it for so long. It's a, f- it's a very, very famous name, and um, we thank you so much for giving up your time to, to talk to us. Steve at Hotmail dot com. You too, kind John. Thank you. Welcome back to Mind Your Own Retirement. Yourlifechoices.com.au is uh, where we're coming from. And uh, we're moving on to travel now. I'm about to speak to Roy Connerty, the Vice Consul at the Consulate General of Ireland in Sydney. Hello, Rory, and welcome to the show. Hi, John. Thanks for having me on today. It's a, it's a real pleasure to join you and Kay on the new podcast uh, to talk about our wonderful island of Ireland. So... The reason we asked you to be with us, Rory, is not only because you're a nice person, as John has told us, but also because we've just been talking family history with Steve Perkin and having been a guest of Tourism Island, let me say that out loud, uh, to Ireland in in March and April, I, I just was hit with a flood of warmth and great connections and memories and really wished I'd done my homework before I went there so I could do my own family history there. Okay, I believe that everyone in the whole universe's history goes back somewhere to Ireland. Everybody. Do you know Barack Obama's (laughs) Irish? I told you. There you go. Forget about Salt Lake City with the Mormons. No, this is where it all is. Somewhere in Ireland. Everyone's from. The little museum of Ireland, you'll find everybody there. Anyway, uh, we preempt Rory, who's going to add some insights to this topic. So I guess I know what not to do now, Rory. Don't just get off the plane and think people will fall over you and help you find your ancestors. What are the steps that you believe are important if, if Australians who adore Ireland are heading there? What should they do? Sure. Well, I suppose the first thing to say is that I suppose when you consider the incredible number of Australians who have Irish heritage, um, more than 2.3 million, according to the most recent census, it's really no surprise that Ireland holds such a special place um, in the hearts of so many. Um, And we certainly see that in Ireland with the 
number of Australians who are visiting Ireland um, and we welcomed over 200,000 from Australia in 2018. In terms of the exciting adventure of exploring your ancestry, as, as you know now, Kay, there, there are some, I think, some kind of initial steps that you can take that will really set you up for success. And more and more information and records are now available online. So I would always suggest to people who are interested in exploring their Irish ancestry that they hop onto the internet. And there are two websites that I'd really recommend. Um, The first one, www.irishgenealogy.ie. It's an absolutely fantastic resource where anyone can access civil records that cover births from 1864 to 1918, marriages from 1864 again to 1943, and deaths from 1878 to 1968. So this is a really good kind of initial starting point to try identify um, a a documented record of an ancestor um, and really a helpful jumping off point. Um, I suppose... To go along with that, um, the the kind of research that an individual can do themselves, a wonderful community has also developed online to help people trace their Irish ancestry. And there's a fantastic organisation called Ireland Reaching Out. And this is a a non-profit, volunteer, community-based organisation that's funded in part by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. And what Ireland Reaching Out does is help some of the 70 million people of Irish descent who live abroad today to connect with Ireland, with their hometowns or towns of origin of their ancestors and to try to find out if there are any living relatives still there. It's an absolutely a wonderful organisation and with some really great information on their website, which is www.irlandxo.com. So Rory is saying, do your research before you go to save time when you get there. Yeah, the beauty of these organisations like Ireland Reaching Out is that you can connect with people who are already on kind of their journey um, in terms of identifying their ancestors. And you learn from, I suppose, some of what they've gone through, maybe some challenges they encountered, some mistakes they made, and also the local volunteers who can just give you such really good pointers and help you narrow down your focus and recommend what the the sights and sounds to enjoy in a local area might be. So Rory, what you're saying I think is a big deal here because instead of researching family history and, you know, sort of finding a, a graveyard or or something and and finding the traces of of relatives who've gone before you're saying this second website can put you in touch with real people who may have a connection to you and your family absolutely yeah and i suppose the the thing that um strikes me about ancestry um, and the, the kind of the joys of exploring it is that it's a two-way thing when you can connect um with the living relatives at home in Ireland. Um, Like people take great pleasure, I think, in um, filling in the gaps in terms of their family history and learning about the different lines um, that have left Ireland and built lives and had great families overseas somewhere uh, here like Australia. Um, So it, it works both ways, I think, when you can create that kind of a connection. That's brilliant. And there's, as a sort of starting point, assuming a lot of people go in via Dublin, is it the Epic Centre? Have I got that right? The the story of, of um, Irish immigration and, and leaving? Yeah, Epic, the Epic um, Museum is, a, is an absolutely wonderful centre. And as you said, um, really does a fantastic job in weaving um, a, a really strong and interesting narrative that tells the story of the, the generations of Irish who've migrated, where they've gone and how they've um, built their built their lives overseas Um, and certainly um, if somebody is in Dublin um, I have a feeling that it's going to be right at the top of uh, their place to visit list because it's generally considered to be one of the the best attractions in all of Europe. Rory Conaty the Vice Consul General for Tourism in Ireland uh, is uh, joining us uh, today on Your Life Choices, Uh, Mind Your Own Retirement our podcast and Rory it's great to have you here now uh, I'd like a bit of free advice if I might my girlfriend, who has Irish uh, heritage, of course, who doesn't, uh, and uh, she, she and I are very keen to go to Ireland for the first time. Um, where should we start and where should we finish? 
Say if we had, uh, say, two weeks. Look, if you, if you have two weeks to explore Ireland, um, you'll really have an opportunity to see and do so much. I suppose most people, um, their journey in Ireland begins in Dublin um, because that's where most people enter um, and there's just great service now from Australia to Dublin um, through the Middle East with the likes of Emirates, Etihad and Qatar and then through Hong Kong with Cathay. So if you're starting in Dublin, you obviously have a fantastic opportunity to explore um, what is a town that was built in the early Middle Ages um, and you can explore the historic sites there, whether that be Dublin Castle, some of the fantastic museums like Epic, um, the National Gallery, um, but don't spend all your time in Dublin. Okay, Make so sure we've, we've got the we've hired the car. Where are we off to? You've hired a car. Most important thing to say there is you're driving on the same side of the road, so no fear, um, you'll be well set. Um, and think about the the geography of Ireland. Um, you can go from the east coast to the west coast, so Dublin to Galway, in two to two and a half hours. Galway, which of course is European capital of culture, um, next year. You can explore Galway, enjoy the wonderful oysters. Um, oh. And then what I would do is recommend you make your way up or down our gorgeous western coast. So if you were to travel south from Galway, you can take in the beautiful wild Atlantic Way, um, which just has such stunning landscapes and scenery, so the likes of the Cliffs of Moher, um, then on down through Clare um, to the likes of the Burren, and then all the way down to, to Kerry and Cork. Um, and if you're in a car, I suppose the beauty of it is you have that great flexibility to, to stop off as you go, sample the atmosphere in uh, the lovely little towns along the way. And we won't and worry about uh, drinking because uh, Kay will be driving, which is great. <laughs> Good, I'm, good. Well, you, you can enjoy the drink. Yeah, he's the nominated driver. It's, it's a menage a trois. <laughs> Rory, I'm Settle going down. to... Settle down. That's our next podcast. I'm, I'm going to have to go because I have to put John back in his place. Oh, can I just <laughs> ask one more question? Just one more question. Just one more question. If, I, I, never can, get to... if I can ask one more too. Okay, well, my last question <laughs> is, what's the one place that you know about that I should visit that no one else knows about? <laughs> Okay, so top secret, highly classified information here, John. Um, if, you, if you're going to the West Coast, um, I would really recommend that you stop off in the, the lovely port village of Cove in County Cork. Um, it's, a, it's an absolutely beautiful seaside um, setting, um, so a very, very vibrant um, fishing town and has really fascinating connections to Australia as well. Cove was um, one of the main ports for Irish people who migrated to Australia oh, during the early 19th century and of course is also famous as the last port of call for the Titanic. Oh um, yes of course I'll, I'll make sure that my driver um, takes us there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> one one question from me, Rory, because we're doing a poll. We're writing an article on castles in Ireland. Which would you nominate as your favourite? Oh, now, that's a tough one, Kay. I know. Uh, there are so many castles to choose from. You nearly you can't throw Pick a stone one. without hitting one at home. <laughs> uh, or, or maybe just quirkiest. Is is there one that uh, is there one called Malahide? Malahide Castle um, is, is a beautiful spot um, just outside Dublin. Um, not only do you have the castle, but you have the beautiful gardens and park around it. Um, so it really does make for um, for a lovely day out when the, the, the sun is shining. Um, so, yeah, no, OK, you, you've done your research there. I think you've picked a good one in Malahide. <laughs> do you know, Rory, I went there with Tourism Island and um, I, I, I... Thanks for the invitation, I Kay. actually cannot recommend the Wild Atlantic Way strongly enough. Um, it's extraordinary and it's like nowhere else well, in the world. I'm going to Cove. You're going to I'm Cove. I'm definitely going to okay. Cove. OK, well, you can do both, John. Rory, thank you so much for giving up your time today. <laughs> thank you, John, and thank you, Kay. What a lovely man. What a lovely man. Thank you, Rory. Now, you have a nugget to leave us with, madame. Well, a nugget is something you didn't know before. The Irish consume an average of 131.1 litres of beer a year. The Irish are drinking now? The Irish apparently drink. The most famous Irish brewery is Guinness. I'm setting this up, John, but I'm doing it very smoothly. 
Arthur Guinness started the brewery at age 27 with his inheritance of £100. He married Olivia in 1761. Their house is just behind the brewery when you visited in Dublin. It's still there, no longer their house because they're no longer with us. But we think there is no doubt he nipped home at lunchtime because they had 21 children. Who said Guinness doesn't work? I was told by Leon it puts lead in your pencil. I don't know what that means, but this is a plug. I don't know what that means. This is a plug for oh, our... Not for our next one. Our next episode. Episode sucks. Episode six. Oh, sorry, I'm from New Zealand. <laughs> That's coming up next week. We're going to talk talk about sex, baby. <laughs> We're going to talk about sex, baby. You've, you've come a long way, Baby. baby. <laughs> Um, you've been listening to Mind Your Own Retirement. Uh, episode number five is at a close, but boy, oh boy, get ready for a red hot mama. Episode number six, talking about sex and everything in between. Uh, you've been listening to Kay Fallick, the publisher of uh, Your Life Choices magazine. Go to yourlifechoices.com.au for all things simplifying retirement. Kay, till next time. Au revoir. <laughs>